Hi, I'm Lynn Fairley. Welcome to R Ventura TV. Uh, it's my pleasure to have today my guest, Lorenzo De Stefano. He's been on before, so this is an update with what he's been doing and how he's doing. Welcome, Lorenzo. Thanks, Lynn. Now, you and I have been collaborating uh, together since about 2011. The first time I interviewed you was for uh, The Face of Ventura. That was a project we did on the mm -hmm. radio mm -hmm. with uh, The Breeze and Johanna Spinks. Right. And your portrait was painted at that right. time. Why do you suppose at that time you were The Face of Ventura? I know why. I think they had an opening. <laughs> somebody is that what out. it is? Somebody dropped out. I, read I don't know what. <laughs> it was nice, though, you know. Um, that was, what, about two years after the Film Society started, which is how most people f knew who I was a little bit, you know. And for uh, uh, the viewers who are just uh, getting to know you today, the Ventura Film Society is your brainchild. You came to Ventura in around 2007, and you mm -hmm. looked around and you went, what, no alternative films? And since then, you've brought to our little community 400 films, filmmakers, guests, movie yeah, stars, Malcolm McDowell, lots of really interesting people, Ray mm -hmm. Bradbury, and you've, you've brought to us wonderful, wonderful theater. So tell us about that and how you started it, where it is today, and where it's headed. Okay. Well, you know, having been a filmmaker, uh, being a filmmaker now, going to festivals of m different qualities, you know, uh, I thought that there was it's a big enough town where you could do something like that. So I started some meetings in the summer of 2008, with some people at early stage of this discussion. And then we uh, had a launch party in December of 2008 at the old candlelight, you know, and, and, uh, and then March of nine, 2009, we had our first festival at the Elks and we continued to do that there for a couple of years. Uh, and then it evolved in 2010 into a, uh, a annual uh, year long thing, once a month, twice a month, various, uh, you know, ev evolutions at the Wave, at the Museum, at 420 Santa Clara. And then this last season, uh, seven, seven has been at the uh, Museum and at the Century 10 downtown. So yeah, 400 films, scores of filmmakers, lots of inner reaction relationships with uh, Brooks students, uh, local filmmakers, and many of them involved in different ways. And this month, early this month, recently, uh, we together got together and celebrated uh, sort of the, the final movie of this seventh season. And uh, you've, you announced that you're on hiatus for a little while. Yeah, well, I've been announcing it the last few months because I, I you know, I didn't, the city of Ventura has been super supportive with, with grants from the Community Partnerships uh, Fund. And uh, so I figured if I applied again, we'd get it because it's been steady, consistent. You know, we still have to apply and uh, measure up to, the, do we deliver on the promise of reaching out to people, which we usually do. Um, but I, I decided not to apply for a grant because if I didn't have the money, I would be forced into not doing it, and which I, because I'm doing some other things, um, <clears throat> I needed to sort of force myself to not submit again. Uh, so, but we did 12 films this year, which is a nice model. About, once a month, and um, uh, we're going to kind of change. We've always changed, you know, in order to survive uh, from, the, from the festival annually to a year-long schedule to different venues. So it's, it's just an uh, evolution of the idea. But it'll be, this is the end of, of as we've known it, you know, that regularly scheduled stuff. Oh, so we have something exciting on the horizon, I'm sure. Well, we've got a few things to possibly do next year, yeah. And the, the venues will be there. We've got good relations with everyone. And the mailing list is, is large and strong. So I think if people won't forget too quickly, you know, uh, they'll come out, hopefully, for these things. I'm sure they will. You're a uh, writer, a director, an amazing photographer. And you have a brand new project you're also working on because you mentioned that you didn't apply for this grant because you've got something else and cooking up, right? Let's, yeah. let's hear about what that is. Well, that's a local story which you're aware of. And we were uh, last year uh, on your show with Rachel and Jeannie Flowers. Mm -hmm. um, I met them in January of last year at the, at the Squash Grapes, and they were, we were, she used to play quite often. Which is a local, uh, wonderful music place. Yeah, mm -hmm. on Main Jazz Club. And um, a friend of mine, uh, Hans Otzen, mm -hmm. who's, who's, she was in his band at the time, he says, you've got to come here, this girl, she's unreal, you know. And uh, 
blown away by her amazing talent. And then I met her mom, and I wasn't looking to do another documentary, but it seemed, uh, after not too long, it seemed kind of, it's local, it's easy to make in that sense, it's not a lot of travel. So we started shooting after we got permission from the family uh, in April of last year. We've been filmed uh, 52 days over a 20 month period now. That's a lot. Which is because you kind of get a panoramic of a single mom and two kids, uh, paycheck to paycheck kind of reality in Oxnard. Uh, That's a great amazing social music message. coming out of the family, you know, through Rachel. But, but yeah. what's special about Rachel? What's special about Rachel Flowers? Well, I mean, she's, she's special. She, she's been blind since birth, you know, so she was born 15 weeks premature. Uh, and, you know, one pound, five ounce baby, you know, was very, wow. almost didn't survive. And so to see her blossom into this musical genius, you know, a, a true protege, a true phenomenon. Truly. Um, is great and very modest, someone who's totally because she's blind, she's compensated with it for other things, but she's, she's lovely and she's not, I'm so, so tired of people with ambition, you know, like me. It's to, you know, it's, you can see it in their eyes, you know, they mm. want something from mm. you or from, and she just keeps putting it out for you, musically, and she enjoys it. She's, she's she got a chance it. to uh, meet Stevie Wonder, I think, didn't she? She's known him for years, yeah. 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 He's yeah. in the film. Uh, mm -hmm. in a little uh, walk-on, you know, that we did. Um, Dweezil Zapp was in the film. It's called Hearing is Believing, and uh, we've been working on it. Uh, we're final editing it now, and uh, it'll be out in some festivals next year and hopefully be, be purchased by a distributor and released, you know. And you're looking at a release date in around 2017 and beyond, No, right? no, 16, 16, yeah. yeah right? yeah. Very good. Yeah. And uh, how did you come up with that title? Hearing kind of is just came. believing. Was, well, seeing is believing is a more frequent yeah. phrase. And I thought, well, we'll spin that around because she doesn't see anything. Hmm. What she sees is unknown to us. Hmm. We can project, you know, because she has sight internal, you know, and her eyes are flickering, but hmm. it's not the kind of sight we, we associate. So it's another level altogether. She'll never see the film that's made about her, hmm. but she'll hear it. and. Uh, she uses all the technology that's available to blind or visually impaired people now, which is audio description. She can watch any movie, and the, I don't know if you've heard it, but there's a narrator who says exterior, the Bates Motel, or whatever. You know? <laughs> no. And they describe, <laughs> you know, and they fit it in within the dialogue. Huh. And so someone without sight can fully, not fully, but to a certain extent, experience what we do. How interesting. Yeah. So hearing is her belief system. Is that he yeah, hearing totally. is believing? Is that where the title well, came from? I guess from? it has different meanings. I mean, t she's unbelievable, mm. you know, and yet if you hear her, you'll become a believer kind of thing. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. That's, that's adorable. But it seems to have worked. I mean, the, the tagline of the film has been started early on is, uh, in a world filled with music, there's a wonder in the making, and her name is Rachel Flowers. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, you know, the theme that's evolved about this family story is it's not just a music film, it's a family saga in a way, uh, is the great that exists in the small. This is something we've been working on. Oh, I like that. The great that exists in the small. Yeah. In other words, you know, you have Hollywood or media pumping things up beyond their true value, reality mm. TV and so forth. Mm. We won't mention names, but you know mm. what I'm talking about. Uh, and we, that's something we got to look at and pay attention to when it's really very shallow. Very. So you have this things that could be easily overlooked. Families, a talent like hers, living in a tract house in Oxnard, who cares, you know? Mm. But when you focus, when filmmakers and storytellers focus their attention on these things, and they're fortunate enough to make good product and, and it gets seen, gets released, you can fight against that shallowness by saying, this is what's really great. And it's something you could have overlooked. Hmm. It's not so sexy, you know, as, as these hmm. other things, but it has its own strong appeal. And I think people need that now, you know. Very much so. And that's, yeah. to me, that's what you've brought to Ventura all along. And you brought all the films, of all 400 films, every single one of them had that type of message. It was that kind well, there of There were sort story. of discoveries, maybe, you know. Yeah, things that we would have overlooked is what I mean by that. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what I look for as a, as a storyteller. And, mm. you know, sometimes you misfire, you pick the wrong thing, and no one's interested, you know. Mm. This one has, Rachel has a 
pretty strong fan base. You know, mm -hmm. her mom is Jeannie has been diligent about YouTube channel and and uh, but it's a great people. They're just folks, you know. Mm -hmm. I like them. Oh, lot. that's great. That's great. And your slogan for um, the uh, film society was bringing people together in the dark. Yeah. On a Tuesday night, you could not be a couch potato here in Ventura. It was nice. To, the proof of that whole experiment of, of doing that, which as I mentioned to you before, kind of showed me a community uh, involvement you can have as a, as a film person, you know, mm. as opposed to that it's me, me, me all the time, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. Uh, it's kind of tiresome, you know. Very. Um, so, so going out and, and offering people something to show that they actually left the house for things, you know. Mm. Uh, there's so much at home. You can dial up any movie you ever wanted to see. But maybe people crave a little campfire experience. Nice. You know, That's true. You got together. them out of the house, away from the big screen, away from yeah, the... Whether it's 30 or 60 or 200 or... Wow. It's, it's, and we've had various levels of audience, you know. Some movies attract, others is not as much. But, um, yeah. Congratulations, because that also was a way for you to get involved very quickly in your new community. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, as, as most new ideas, it was slow at, at the start. You're building something. And then, you know, the, I should, the volunteer base has been amazing. Mm. You know, the people from the beginning, box office, graphics, uh, internet, uh, website, you know, all that. Mm. Um, steady, you know, mm. support. Yeah, it's been For my pleasure to money, support you, know. you all this time. Right. Your very media has so. been really important. It's been very cool. Um, so let's talk just briefly about uh, the expectations of a filmmaker, not only on your product, or what you, you uh, perceive the expectations of the community to be, or your audience, but on yourself as well. How do you, you, how do you, you juggle something? all the expectations you might have for this film, for example? Yeah, well, that's, you get vulnerable, you mm. know, to, you have to sort of be fully enthusiastic, but then protect also being overly uh, expectant, expectant about what's going to happen, you know. Mm. The world is much bigger than these ideas, you know, and it depends. The timing is really important. Um, you know, we feel Rachel has a message, you know, and and uh, it's just about sur survival, expansion, growth, you know, uh, despite huge adversities mm -hmm. that she's suffered and her family too. They're a cool family, you know. Her brother Vaughn is 14 years old, and we just recently got him on camera. He said, "I don't want anything to do with." too much Rachel, Rachel, Rachel all the time. I said, well, tell us that. Come on, film and express that, because you're part of the family. So if, just before we're finishing filming, he finally came around, and I shot him a couple of weeks ago, and it was great. You know, he was, he was ready for me, you know. Good for you. And he says, you know, I'm here too. Hello. Wow. Uh, so it was more and more become a portrait of the family. So we have high hopes for it. Uh, mm. We hope there's room in the world for that kind of a mm. story. Uh, we know it's well told, it's well shot, well, f well recorded, well edited. So you have to measure up, uh, uh, you know, critically, because it's rough out there. It's it's very rough out there. But the more exposure you get to Rachel Flowers' uh, viewers, the better. So anytime you see her in the newspaper or see anything about her playing anywhere in town, go, go. She plays a lot. She's even recently gone to Vegas. Yeah, we filmed her with Weasel Zappa, invited her to join the Zappa Play Zappa tour, and she'd be playing with him in December of uh, 2015. And uh, I think more and more, you know, she'll, when she gets more out there, hopefully the film will help if it gets well released. Uh, she'll get booked and she'll get a professional oh, yeah. manager and, and she'll start earning uh, as she should, as maybe an opening act, mm -hmm. guest star, and then she'll be a headliner, you know. There's nothing in the way. Well, I want to thank you very, very much for coming on to Thanks. our Ventura TV and my program. And I also want to thank the viewers for watching this year. There's been some amazing, amazing shows brought to you by George Alger and his team. And so tune in again next year to our Ventura TV. And I'm sure we're going to be bringing you a whole lot more programming. And maybe we'll bring you Rachel Flowers. That'd be She'd fun. She'd love to, yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. All right. Thanks, Lynn. You bet. Thank you again. I'm Lynn Fairley. I've been your host today.